Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another TFL truck towing test. And this one is courtesy of Ford because they flew us down here to San Antonio and set up these trucks. We want to be complete and open about that. To my left is the Silverado, the 6.2 liter V8. And of course, you know what this is? It's the Hemi, the 5.7 liter V8. And Nathan, you are standing by a Ford. What's under the hood? This baby has a 3.5 liter V6 twin turbocharged EcoBoost. So why do we pick the 3.5 six cylinder and compare it to the eights? Because in terms of overall performance, it is comparable to those engines. And that is coming up next on the fast lane truck. So here are the weights for these trailers. This is the 6.2 liter V8 that's on the Chevy. And this one is just a hair under 10,000 pounds. This one over here is for the Ram. And with that Hemi, 9,000 pounds. And here's the Ford F-150 with the EcoBoost V6. And this one's just a hair under 10,000 pounds. Nathan, why is the Ram at only 9,000? Uh, because what Ford did is they had them paired differently for competing trucks, right? But what we wanted to do is we wanted them to compete because we think the V8 actually competes directly with this V6. This is the beast. This is the big one. It's a 6.2 liter V8 out of the last generation Corvette. 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque. That's massive, and it's hooked up to a six-speed automatic transmission. All right, guys, we are now in the horsepower and torque leader, uh, obviously the Silverado, and uh, Let's be completely open about this, Nathan. We threw a huge monkey wrench into Ford's system, right? Yeah, we did. Because they had the trucks paired up differently? Yeah, they did. They based them on overall capacity and weight, and what we did is we paired them based on engine, what we think competes with each other. Yeah, we kind of think that, uh, obviously, the two, uh, Silverado and the Ram VA compete against each other, uh, and then we could have paired that up with the Ford 5-liter, but we think that, in terms of power, and capability, the uh, 3.5 liter EcoBoost competes more with these trucks. Yeah, yeah, and then remember, this is from the Ike Gauntlet, so we have a little bit of experience with this. Now, with that being said, what we're going to do, because we only have a few minutes, is talk about overall feel, because that's really all we're going to be able to test. You can't do a real test in 10 minutes, right? E exactly, and just so that we're very clear, uh, this Chevy has a 3.73 axle ratio. That's right. And it's going to be different on all trucks, so it really is apples to oranges, but you know what? Getting trucks with the exact same axle ratio is the holy grail of car reviews <laughs> and unfortunately we're not going to be able to do it here. That's because... really, really tough to do. But what we can tell you, like right off the bat, the seating position in this truck is my favorite. It always has been. But with that being said, they don't give you a telescoping steering wheel. You can't go back and forth and it drives me crazy. So this is just a quick personal thing, seat of the pants. I love the seating position. This is a lower truck. It has a lower hood and everything else from the Ford and from the Ram. But it is obviously there are some problems. Now, Nathan, I'm going to do another disclaimer. Yeah. Uh, and that is uh, the fact that actually figuring out the maximum towing capacity of each of these trucks is harder than it may seem. Yes. And that's simply because it really has to do with the configuration of the truck. So the that's mo right. The more weight that the truck has, the less towing capacity. So the one thing that we do have is all of them are 4 by 4s Yep. And all of them are the extended uh, uh, four cab, door. Yeah. yeah, four door cab. So in that regard, they're similar, but we don't necessarily know exactly the weight of these, so we don't know the towing capacity of each one. Um, and I know there's a lot of disclaimers, guys, but we do want to give you um, as much information as we can so that you can judge. Yeah, Ford isn't trying to pull anything, all right? They've simply told us everything they can about each vehicle they've given us. What we're doing is we're comparing them based on our own personal experience with these vehicles, and we know for a fact that the EcoBoost can compare with the 6.2 liter V8. As a matter of fact, right now, as I'm driving it, it does feel a tad bit sluggish, and part of that has to do with the fact that they're trying to gear this for economy. And yes, it is in tow mode. Let me double check. Yeah, it's in tow mode. 
And you know what? Uh, the one thing that Ford has not given us, unfortunately, is a Monroney. Yeah, none of these have the Monroney the sticker. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're not available, so what we've had to do is look up the information. But, once again, we're trying to do this based on what we know about the vehicles that we've already driven, and on top of that, what the feel is. And on top of that, it's a pretty good riding truck. Yeah, it's a really good riding truck. You know, all these trucks are now car-like, right? They're yeah. quiet, they're comfortable, and they're certainly much easier to drive than even the last generation of trucks. That's right. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do a race up a hill. And You know, we're in Texas, and I don't think they really have too many hills. How does it feel with the 10,000 pounds? You know what? It's a little sluggish off the line, but once you get going, passing power is okay. Why don't you turn around and, Yeah, this is a good place to turn around, right yeah, here. Yeah. And um, braking, right now I'm under full braking. It's a little spongy, but it's not too bad. Full disclosure, we asked Ford to open up the inside of this trailer just so you can see what's in here. Uh, this is the one that's hooked up to the EcoBoost and you can tell it's just pig iron. So we're not towing pigs but we're towing pig iron. A total of 10,000 pounds. And there you have it. What's inside the trailer. Not as sexy as you might have thought. There we go. Oh, it sounds good. I love the sound of the 6.2 liter. Yeah, and you know, there's this controversy now about natural sound versus enhanced sound. <laughs> Some of you may call it fake. Uh, and we know that uh, Ford, in the truck that we're about to drive, the 3.5, enhances the sound of that EcoBoost. And what they do basically is they uh, use noise cancellation to get rid of some of the unwanted harshness and then boost, of course, the more wanted, pleasant sounds of the engine. Now, Ford will tell you that they're only enhancing the sound and they're not necessarily faking it. Right, but they're not trying to make it sound like it's a big V8. Like this. This is obviously a big V8. It's got that V8 rumble. Yes, thank God. Huh. <laughs> there is something about towing with the V8, but once again, it's uh, all about fuel economy nowadays. Yeah, it is, and I think that's part of the reason why this is a little bit sluggish. The way they program transmissions nowadays is not for a super, especially in tow mode, is not for a super sharp maximum torque right off the line pull because you're gonna you know tear up your tires and that's not what you want what you want is a nice even easy pull away from a dead stop and that's exactly what this truck's been doing now each of these uh, brands has a different strategy for increasing fuel economy and the way that Chevy does it is it out of the all three of them has the only cylinder deactivation so when you're not towing because when you're towing 10,000 pounds, you ain't going to deactivate any cylinders, right? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But when you're not towing, this truck can drive in a four-cylinder mode, which gives you uh, exceptionally good fuel economy because you're only using half the cylinders. That's right. And on top of that, i got to say, in terms of it being the most pleasant ride, this certainly, certainly is one of the better riding trucks out there. Yeah, I would say with 10,000 pounds back there or just under, it rides really well. Yeah, yeah. Well done, Chevy. Yeah, nicely, nicely done. I would also say the interior is... Uh, really uh, well executed. I like it. I really like the new interior. But once again, one of the things that's really crushing me right now is the fact that the steering wheel, I know this is, seems like a minor gripe, but you know what? If you're going to be in this thing for thousands of miles, Which you, are. you want it to telescope. You want that adjustment. This is the Ram, baby, and it has a Hemi. 395 horsepower, 407 pound-feet of torque, and it's a 5.7 liter Hemi V8. This baby's hooked up to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Nathan, we are now in the Ram, which used to be a Dodge, which <laughs> used to be, or still is, the bad boy of the automobile brand, right? That's and this right. thing has some attitude. It's the only truck where the exhaust goes straight out the back, dual exhaust, and I think it's got, well, definitely it has the best exhaust note by far. It sounds really good, but once again, no telescoping steering. This just goes up and down. I forgot about that. I can't stand it. It's the one thing I really wish automakers would do. It's just, look, I have eight black arms, and some of you do too, and it would be a lot easier. Okay, you know where I'm going with this. And I'm not a big fan of the hockey puck style rotary knob. I'm sorry. It's. Are you uh, on the column, man? 
No, actually, I like it right here. I like it. just a big old meaty thing that I can just go blang and then hear the truck go blang and then go instead of. Oh, that's there we go. That's you know, there are different options for that. The high end has the hockey puck. Yeah, well, you know what? You can actually get it on on almost all models now. So this has a 3.92 rear axle ratio, uh, which is obviously different than the other trucks. But once again, getting the exact axle ratio is very difficult to do. Uh, yeah, and, and remember, folks, what we are doing here is we're not comparing the ability to actually pull a load per se. We're doing seat of the pants. This is only 9,000 pounds back here, but it does have the 5.7 liter V8, and that's really what we want to drive. We want to feel what it's like with this engine, which we feel competes directly with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine in the new Ford F-150. Uh, and that's the thing, guys. If you ever go and purchase a truck, the numbers are all over the place in terms of towing capacity, and it really has to do with how the truck's equipped. That's right. You have to have the specific setup to have a specific tow rating. Now, Ford says they have a new maximum of 12,100 pounds on their 1500. And that is SAE. Cup. Right, yeah. right. But, but, keep in mind, that's a very specific truck. Yep. It's not going to be the, you know, the top of the line 4x4. Four four. Lariat with the big wheels and Actually, all that. Actually, this is a Lariat, dude. Sorry, did I say Larian? Yes, King Ranch. King Ranch. <laughs> the same thing. They're He's the driving. ranching things. They're, 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 they're the rodeos. And, Damn whatever. it, it's cowboy stuff. We're here in Texas. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we can feel it. We're in Texas, all right. Woo! Now, um, I really like the Ram. I think it has the most attitude out of all of them. I think it has uh, a really nice interior. Yep. Uh, and I think that... Uh, it's a comfortable it, truck, man. It's a really comfortable truck, and I love the view over the hood. Yeah, I think the Chevy is a little bit easier to drive because it has a lower hood and an overall lower seating position, but this one kind of cuts the difference between the Ford and the Chevy, and you know, I have always admitted it, I like Rams, I love the way they look and love the way they drive. Yeah, you're the bad boy of the bunch here. That's what I do. <laughs> but, but with that being said, there are a couple things that right off the bat I can tell you, in terms of pulling off the line, makes an awful lot of noise, but not a whole lot happens. So, man, I put my foot down and it's not, you hear it. But we're not really, I mean, do you feel any, like, pull? Yeah, it's, uh, it's more gradual. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You know, uh, it does have, uh, I think this is the middle amount of horsepower when it's compared to the EcoBoost. Right? Yeah, 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 that's right. Now, here's here's an interesting fact. Now, we have had an opportunity to drive most Rams up the I Gauntlet, and we're really looking forward to getting this particular truck, but with the new Eco Diesel, which, have we had it yet? No. No! I don't think they want to give us one, Nathan. That's, I, I think the they're a little, you know, whoa, 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 Scotland is just scary. Now I'm going to get a phone call from Nick. <laughs> so, Nick, I'm just putting you on notice that we want to take that thing up the Ike Gauntlet, and Nick keeps telling we us. We wanted to do that for a year. A year now, and he keeps telling us that he wants to get us the truck that's configured in the right way. At this point, we just want a truck. Give us the diesel, man. Yeah, yeah. Dude, our fans. What are you afraid of, Nick? What are you afraid of? We need to erase all that. No, we're not erasing it. We're erasing everything. <laughs> Let's get back to the moment at hand, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what we... Um, brakes are good. Yeah? Yeah, brakes feel really good. No fade. No fade. Well, for this little tiny bit of driving, they feel less squishy than the ones that were in the Chevy. It's very difficult for us to get anything other than a seat of the pants review and feel for each truck. And that's because, well, one thing. We've actually taken these trucks up the Ike Gauntlet before, so we've had an opportunity to drive them. However, this is an all-new vehicle, so we had an opportunity to drive this as well. And we can tell you, they're all very competent, but we really need to get them up to Colorado for a proper test. You know, I gotta say that the interior, just, just the visual, just looking at the interior, this is the best looking interior still. And I mean, Ford is really up their game, but I really like what Ram has done. And the fact is, is that they still have one of the best looking interiors. You know, it's, funny because once upon a time trucks were these work things right yeah, that work almost hose them down rough on the inside cheapest plastics right right right, right. cheapest materials not anymore no 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 everything i touch is soft even the knobs are soft everything is designed to work with gloves on right yep. Yep. Because the manufacturers will tell you this is the biggest tool in the toolbox. Oh yeah, I always thought that was unique. I'm, I've been a tool for years, and you guys have been <laughs> saying it. But the point is, is that nowadays you can kind of have both. You can have a really luxurious vehicle that can really handle some hard work, and all the truck brands get it. Except they're not cheap. They're not cheap anymore. Yeah, that's that's a difficult pill to swallow, man. These are some expensive ass trucks. We don't have the uh, stickers, but I'm betting these are well in the 40s. If well, not, oh, 50s. If not oh, in the 50s, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. And once, and, and we get it. We understand the whole point. I mean, you know, 
these are guys who work and they really want a comfortable vehicle and we get it. But unfortunately, even the base model work versions of these trucks are pretty pricey nowadays. Yeah, they're getting into the 20s. There's no such thing well anymore the as a truck in the teens, I fear. Oh, no, no, no. You're not going to be able to get a full-size truck for under 20. I don't think that exists in this country. No, no. I don't think it does either. But then you get a lot of luxury. You get a lot of safety features, right? All the stuff you would have in a car the beeping when you're parking, the blind side And monitoring. some really comfortable seats. I mean, they're comfortable. I'm big American ass. Absolutely loves the size of these seats. Nathan, there's even a heated steering wheel. I know. Folks, we've driven this engine before, so we know what it can do. This is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost twin turbocharged V6. Puts out 365 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque, and it's hooked up to a six-speed automatic transmission. All right, my man, we are now in the Ford F-150, the 2015, and this is the EcoBoost. The 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Yep, and I've asked Keith Weston, who is a dynamics engineer, right Keith, is that yes, your title? Yes, to join us for this ride, and uh, to get his perspective on this truck, because we wanted to, well this is the newest truck, and this is the first time we're driving it, so it's good to have an expert on board. Hell yeah. Let's talk about axle ratio first, Nathan. Let's okay. see what this guy has. And this one has the 3.55. Now Ford, and I'll let Keith explain this, will tell you that the reason the number is lower is because the truck weighs less. So less weight in the truck, lower axle ratio, more fuel economy. Is that right? Did I kind of summarize that? Un in the unloaded condition, absolutely. The gross combined weight for the truck yep. actually uh, didn't change, right? Or in some cases went up. So there, your gross combined weight's the same. We took the weight out of the truck, we gave it to the customer in terms of load carrying capability, but there the axle ratio um, would still be numerically lower, right? So you've taken out around 700 pounds from the from the previous this F-150. This particular one would be right around 700 pounds, yeah. Yeah, and that's including uh, 70 pounds out of the actual frame, which is a steel frame, it's the body that's aluminum. Yeah, every panel you see on this thing is aluminum, so if you guys got one of those companies and you want to stick a magnetic sign on the truck... Yeah, you're kind of out of luck. You just, just get double stick tape, you'll be fine. <laughs> Alright, so how does it drive, Nathan? Well, so far it has no problem getting up to speed. Now, it's different because, see, at high altitude, where we've tested this before, it definitely had a physical advantage over the trucks that we'd driven before, right? It's, you know, especially with uh, super high altitude. Yep. Down here, it really feels like it's on par with the uh, 5.7 liter Hemi okay. in terms of its acceleration. And the reason for that is there's less air density up at the Ike Gauntlet and so turbos make up for some of that. Mm -hmm. And so if you have naturally aspirated engines, they tend to suffer. 30% loss up at 10,000 uh, feet. Yeah, that's right. And the EcoBoost, in this case, makes up for that. Oh, it does. And because of that, it's one of the reasons why the EcoBoost absolutely beats the snot out of the other trucks at high altitude. Down here though, now here's something, check this out. You hear that? That is, sound counts canceling and addition from what I hear from the engineer in the back for this engine. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So it's sound enhancement so it cancels the noises you don't want to hear and uh, adds sound qualities that you do want to hear. This truck actually tries to emulate the sound of a V8 and it's a V6. Yeah it definitely sounds throaty and otherwise if we had this thing with its regular sound it would probably be nowhere near as bassy and as deep, right? It'd probably sound a lot uh, like a much higher pitch. And to be yeah. fair, Ford's not the first one that's done this. Manufacturers no. have been doing it a for lot. quite some time, actually. For quite some time, yeah. And there's different levels of manipulation, right? BMW actually takes the sound from the exhaust pipe that pipes it into the. <laughs> so you get you get you know you get different levels of enhancement. Uh, we'll leave that for you guys to decide what you think about it. Obviously, it's controversial, and. Uh, it's kind of the way of the future. Yeah, I don't think putting on a Borla exhaust on this thing is going to make it sound any different. In fact, it might actually sound worse. Now, we are in a top the line, Nathan, King Ranch. That's right. And we do have the Monroney for this particular truck. Okay. Uh, it's uh, just so we're very clear. 
$62,325. Ooh, but this is the very top of the line truck, right? This is as big as it gets. This is as expensive as it gets, right? You got four by four. We've got uh, all leather, super everything. Yep. Electric, yeah, I was going to pass this only because we have the engineer in the back. We're going to keep talking okay. to him for all a little right. bit. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have, uh, well, we have pretty much, I think, wouldn't you say it's got pretty, every option there's available in this truck, Keith? It's got most of them. There's yeah. a platinum also. Yeah, this doesn't have the um, around view setting up here, um, so I guess this doesn't have that. Camera. The 360 no, camera. Have, no. Okay, so that is an option, right? Uh, so that's something that this doesn't have, but it seems like it has just about everything else. The interior is much improved, you know. Oh, it yeah. used to be uh, plastics. Hard plastics here. on the door panels. I know I bitch about that all the time, guys, but you know what? They've taken care of that, and so with the higher grade F-150, you now get this really nice, comfortable bolstering. Now, by the way, this area here is still not what the door panel is actually shaped like. If you were to take this off, it's just a regular cutout, but they put that up there for a more ergonomically comfortable feel. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful interior. I gotta tell you, I know you like the Ram the best, I like the Ford the best. And maybe that's because we have a long-term Raptor and I'm most comfortable with it, so I'm you know putting that out there so you guys are aware of it, but I just like the uh, kind of functionality of it. Uh, I like the I like the look of it, uh, but if I were to choose, I'd pick the Ford. But you know they're so close. The interiors are so nice in all three trucks. It's really just a, a question of you know tiny degrees. Yeah, the automakers have finally stepped up the game, and now they're all kind of some almost even footed in terms of their interior design and execution. <laughs> Nathan, here's the test of your driving skills. You're gonna make a pretty tight U-turn. Oh, here. piece of cake. <laughs> piece of cake. It's actually a very long wheelbase truck too. I think this is about as long as it gets for this class. This is a 157 inch wheelbase. 157. So uh, I think that's, isn't that as long as it gets for this? We've got a 163. It's an eight foot box. Ah, uh, the only a super cab. All right, well, Nathan's concentrating very hard, trying not to hit a rock, which um, I could cool. see I would do. Uh, let me ask you some kind of technical questions while I got you in here. Uh, in terms of the interior space, is there more space in the 2015 than in the outgoing model? I'm the chassis guy. <laughs> I'm the, I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well, let's talk about the chassis. Sure. Is it stiffer? The frame is yeah. stiffer. Uh, we're using more high-strength steel, so it's lighter and it's also stiffer. Well, what does that get you? Why is stiff good? Ah, uh, stiffer is always better because it allows... That's what she said, sorry. Oh, good. <laughs> really, you had to go there. Poor engineers. Oh, God. Take more than that to offend me. <laughs> so, uh, you want to be able to control the ride motions, and you want to be able to do that with the dampers and the bushings. You want to engineer the compliance, and you want to engineer the transfer of energy into heat, and... You want to do that with components that you control. We control shock absorbers, we control suspension bushings, we control stabilizer bars, we control spring rates, and if ideally the frame and structure were infinitely stiff, that increases our tuning flexibility. In reality, that's never the case, but stiffer is always better. Let me ask you this, Keith. Uh, the Ram has optional air suspension. Obviously, what air suspension allows you to do is level the load, give you perhaps a better highway ride. Did you guys ever think about going down that route or is that something that is on your radar? We've considered air suspension. The biggest benefit um, you get with air suspension is the ability to lower the ride height and speed for fuel economy. I believe that's why they do it on the Ram. Um, in terms of vehicle dynamics, um, we don't recognize any true benefit to just purely varying spring rate. If you can vary spring rate and damping and roll couple, then there's definitely benefits in that because you can adjust to any, truly adjust the ride quality to any load condition. Just simply changing spring rate with the same damping. It's a spring mass damper system, right? So that system is tuned for a given mass, right? So we have to tune it for the gross combined weight of the vehicle, trailer, cargo, all that. They also recognize additional ground clearance off-road, but what you do when you do that is you lose rebound travel. That's right, because you're no longer able to articulate with as much ease as you would with a specifically built off-road suspension. Yeah, so if you, you're you trading jounce travel for rebound travel, so you're increasing your jounce travel, you're reducing your rebound travel. Actually, 
true off-road conditions makes the vehicle less comfortable, although it does get you additional ground clearance. And there's some situations where you need that additional ground clearance. It also compensates for extra load in the back too, so it's sure. able to bring up the rear load end. Load leveling, Load leveling, yeah. Now, how's it ride, Nathan? What's well, well, your seat of the pant? Uh... I'd say it's on par with the, the with the Ram. Um, it's you are sitting higher. It, I really think this is the highest of the three. At least that's how it feels. It's an FX4, so yeah, this is the off-road one. So yeah, it's going to have more off-road worthiness built into its uh, DNA. I think um, ride-wise, it's comfortable. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You know, these roads here in Texas are actually really good, unfortunately, and so it's hard to do a seat of the pan comparison when you've got a road that's pretty much, especially for just a few minutes behind the wheel. But yeah. I can tell you that overall, it is one of the quietest interiors. Uh, even when I have it in full boil where you can hear the engine kind of rev up and yes we know that it's augmented but it still has what I think is the quietest ride amongst all three of the vehicles we've tested today. Yeah and um, people uh, have been wondering whether um, that engine noise augmentation also happens when the radio is off because it does go through the radio and yes it does so the only way to stop that from happening is actually pull a... Uh, uh, yeah, get confused, right? Get confused, yeah. yeah which... Uh, I'm not oh, sure well, Ford wants to see any yeah, confuses. It's, it's, it's like jump in, the wrong fuse. Dive into the fuse box and all of a sudden you, you lose power steering or whatever. <laughs> when, but, you, when you're stopped, you can actually also open the door and it turns it off. Really? Really. Interesting. Okay, so learn something new every day. Yeah. Now, I actually want to mention the steering because all three vehicles felt a little bit different. Yeah. Um, with the, I felt the Ram that really had a good feeling steering in terms of its weight okay. because you're not going to get a lot of road feel. But this one, I think, is actually right on par with that as well. The um, electric power steering, the way they've tuned it on this one, really does feel like it has a nice weight to it. And yet, at the same time, very easy to control. So you don't really have to just jump on it and try to heave it around. So I think anybody can drive this truck. And by the way, that everybody's going to electric steering because of the fuel economy. Is yeah, right? it's no longer good. That's it's the sappy. reason, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, we don't know what the fuel economy on this new truck is. It hasn't gone through uh, the EPA compliance testing. Am I right in saying that? That is, we don't know what the fuel economy is, is accurate. Um, well, that they know, but the government I, has I don't know. Yeah. Um, there may be people who have an idea, but I don't think the testing's good. It will be done come uh, mid-November. Mid-November, yeah. so you'll have that information then. Exactly. Ah, look All right. Good. Well, there you have it. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking Thank the time you. and taking a little ride with us. Uh, and guys, once again, seat of the pants. I hope that gives you kind of a, a quick idea of what these guys tow like. These are all competent vehicles, and what really sets them apart is overall feel. That's what I think. Yeah, no, I completely agree, Nathan, but, you know, once again, we've only had them for a few minutes, and it's a number that Ford added to these trucks, not us, so we want to get them up the I gauntlet, and if we can get all three of them up the I gauntlet, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> that would be awesome indeed. We'll try. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Saying thanks for watching, and check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and real-world reviews. Ciao. All right, gang, now this new Ford EcoBoost 3.5 liter F-150 has what Ford calls uh, noise canceling technology, noise control basically. And what it does is it enhances the sound that uh, you want and it also uh, cancels out the sound, the harshness that you don't want. But there's a way to defeat it outside of pulling a fuse, which we don't want to do and here at the Ford event being rude guest, you can open the door. So let's listen to what it sounds like with the door closed and that would be with noise technology on and the engine sound enhanced. So I just turned it on. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of juice once it stops beeping. All right, so that should be with the engine enhanced. So let's uh, open the door and let's see what it sounds like with that off. Oh yeah, can you tell the difference? A lot less of that V8 type burble coming through. Definitely sounds like a six cylinder. Let's turn it back on again, closing the door. Deeper, more growl. I hope you're picking that up. It's subtle, but it's definitely there.